I'm a VFX soup at Sony Imageworks, and, and kind of what that means is that I'm in charge of the project as far as all the visual effects that we end up doing at Imageworks. Um, I'm not necessarily a final say, obviously the director is, and there's art directors and so on, but we're there to execute their vision. It depends on the project. Some projects I'll go onto set and at the beginning of a project before we even get going, and I'll be advising on how they shoot the plate such that we can actually put our visual effects in there. Often we're there taking measurements and, and doing all sorts of weird things to collect data on set so that when we get back to, when I get back to the, uh, our office, uh, that our artists are actually able to put the visual effects in there. And then once we actually kind of finish shooting, we're back um, on the computer, we're basically starting to kind of develop and execute ideas. And in some, sometimes those ideas are fully fleshed out and we're given artwork and it's very clear. And other times we're asked to kind of develop the look of things, whether that be a character or a special effect, that kind of, that sort of thing. When I was a little kid, my dad bought us uh, an Apple II computer and I didn't know anything about it. Um, but somehow he saw the foresight to buy it. Not many people had computers back then. This was the late 70s. And uh, I had a friend whose dad was a programmer at the time, and he came over and he started showing me, you know, what could be done on the computer. And he wrote a very simple program on it, a Hello World, essentially, program. And I kind of remember that moment as a really pivotal moment in my life. I remember looking at that and, and just being amazed that you could write this very simple language and you could command the computer to do something. You could actually create something that no one else had created in a way as simple as that was. And I sort of still program today, and I sort of look at it as actually a pretty creative process. I ended up going to school for political science, um, graduating from Berkeley. Um, and I got out of school and I was like, I don't know why I did that. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be a politician. I should have gone to school for computers, but I just didn't have the confidence. So at that point, my father was a, had a patient. He was a dentist. He had a patient who ran a post house called Digital Magic that was in Santa Monica. It was a really big post house in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was actually my dad who not only just bought me my first computer, but kind of came up with the idea because I was like, I should go back to school and do something creative with computers. Maybe that's architecture. I don't know. And he's like, you know, I've got this patient and he does these commercials and they use computers and maybe you would, you know, be good at that. So he set it up and I went to Digital Magic and I saw that they were doing Harry Bay stuff. They were doing like paint box stuff, mostly 2D things, but they were working on commercials and Star Trek and stuff like that. And there was a small company there called Vision Art. And Vision Art was supplying 3D elements to Digital Magic. And that's what I wanted to do. Once I sort of discovered 3D animation, that's around the time that I kind of realized that this was even a thing. I didn't even really know about it. And because of my computer history, I just said, I, I know I can figure this stuff out because I was just so used to tearing apart programs and working with computers. And I just said I would come in and work in off hours. At that time, it, they were SGI computers and very expensive software, uh, Wavefront, and they were using Prisms. And uh, I just said, look, I'll just come in and I'll intern. And I did. And within a month, I was already doing my sh first job there. And I just picked it up really quickly. And I kind of had the confidence that I could. It was the one thing I was really confident in. So I came at this whole industry from just a love of computers. And I've been learning the film side of it, the animation side of it ever since, and just learning how to be a filmmaker. Uh, but I never went to school for it. When I got to Vision Art, which is my first company, there were just some amazing people there. Um, everybody was really young. I was just out of college. I was probably about 21 years old. But there were artists there that were like 17 and 18, kids just out of high school, that were just kind of doing amazing things. And so some of them were writing programs for creating particle systems, and many of them were learning, you know, lighting. And, and so I would just consider all of them my mentors. At the time, everybody kind of did everything, right? Some people were maybe better at animation, and some people were better at modeling. But I remember just as a personal goal, looking at what everybody could do and say, I want to learn how to do absolutely everything. I don't want to rely on anybody for anything. And I didn't have that goal as like a competitive goal where, you know, I was going to be better than everybody else. I just had this internal drive that I just want to know how everything is done. And uh, I just, you know, basically sucked information out of every single one of them as much as I could uh, until, you know, I was one of their peers. Vision art kind of started to, to uh, have issues around the time that we finished Godzilla. It was a really hard production on us. And people were leaving, and eventually I left, and I went to Sony Imageworks. And at Sony, they have a, a very defined production pipeline, like you're a compositor or you're a effects artist. At Vision Art, we did everything in a package called Prisms, and eventually in a package called Houdini, which was the package that came after it by, the, by side effects software. So Houdini is especially known for its, visual for its effects animation. 
Um, and I was good at that. And I knew Maya as well. I used Maya quite a bit. So I knew them both. But uh, it just made the most sense for me to be an effects animator. And I think it was actually the perfect place for me because I really like to problem solve. Um, I like new challenges. And generally, on any show, when you're given a problem that nobody knows how to do, you generally give it to the effects department to figure out. Some of the biggest brains are in there. I wouldn't consider myself as smart as some of the guys that I was with, but I am tenacious. And uh, I think that tenacity goes a long way. You know, if you really have a drive to learn something and it's okay to ask others for help and figure out how to get it done, however that may be. And that's kind of what I was. I was sort of a scrapper. And uh, you know, I only ever took algebra in school. I never really learned the higher maths, but I learned the maths I needed to know to do what I needed to do. And, you know, I never dreamed that when I started that I would be writing plugins for Houdini and things like that and learning to program at that level. The project that I'm most proud of is Surf's Up. Uh, I was a CG soup on that project, but because of my effects animation background, I was, I head up the effects team. And I was headed up with a, another guy named Matt Hausman, who was really running the day-to-day -day on it, uh, and a few other very talented people. And we had a huge challenge ahead of us to figure out how to do breaking waves and foam and wakes and, and surf wakes and all that, as well as sand, you know, footsteps and sand and moving sand and pushing sand. At that time, this was early 2000, I think 2002 or three, I think maybe, maybe four, I don't remember. But at that time, those things were very difficult to do. We didn't have the kind of fluid simulations that we have now that just didn't exist. So we had to come up with, you know, it was scary. We had to come up with something really hard to do and in the end, there were so many things that went right about that project, about how we did that, and how shading worked, and how animation worked. One of the biggest challenges of that was it wasn't just effects animation. Um, we needed our waves to exist before our animators actually touched it, because the animators needed to obviously react to the wave. We couldn't add in the wave after the fact. Generally, the effects department comes after animation, so the waves needed to be there first. And that meant that the waves needed to exist in Houdini. So as a team, we worked on plugins in Houdini to make it a procedural system to actually have waves that were animatable with very simple controls where you could dial sections of the wave to cause it to break or to retreat. And so we would lay it out in layout with this simple wave rig that we had. Animators would animate to it. Then all of that data would go to the effects department where we would start adding white water and foam and so on. And the shading department would add the, the rest of it. But it was just such a clean pipeline. And I think it was very successful when people enter the industry, and especially today, the disciplines are so sort of segmented. You know, you might study modeling and you might have a passion for that. You might study animation and you'll have a passion for that. And that's okay, and if that's what you want to do, that's great. But I think it really helps to be a generalist and to know every part of the pipeline. Because when you're modeling something, it's really helpful to know how is that thing going to be animated? Because you need to place, you know, you need to place CVs in the right spot such that when the animation comes along, or vertices, those vertices are in the right spot so that things can be animated properly. And so if you have uh, sort of a knowledge of the entire pipeline, you can make decisions knowing that somebody downstream for you is gonna run into a problem unless you do something in your department. And especially if you wanna supervise, you really need to have knowledge of the entire pipeline. And it's not enough to just study it, you have to do it. You have to go through and ideally, if you're at a smaller house, or you're doing your own short, something like that, you really need to do every single part of it. And I still feel like, even supervising now, I'm pretty removed from the work. I'm not really on the box anymore. But I feel like the further I am away from the work, the harder it is for me to lead. And so every once in a while, I'll take a step back and I'll try to composite a shot or I'll try to you know, uh, do some effects in Houdini. And maybe that won't make it into the film, but it just keeps me fresh and allows me to continue to have a dialogue with those that that do know the software very well and then feel a little bit more relevant and I understand the process better.